Round two of my professional MMA debut. As we can see here, the nerves have settled down. Not bouncing around as much, still a little bit, but I've settled down. Getting elbowed in the face, starting to breathe hard, taking some kicks, that tends to settle you down. So he's using his front kick, doesn't get a bit of hip extension on it, so it just falls short. I'm, again, I'm using that right hand, sticking it out just to obstruct his jab. He's trying to work off a long jab, so I stick that right hand out, just put my hand on top of his, makes it difficult for him. I start to push in, get him to the fence, and a right body kick from in close. That's a Muay Thai habit. You see in Muay Thai that people land body kicks from really close like that. Almost exit and clinch range. It's huge in Muay Thai. A lot of scores in Muay Thai come from that. But in MMA you don't really see it too much. Especially to the close side. So I start to back him off. I just literally push him to get him to the fence. Hand fight. Same hand fight as the first round. Hold the elbow over it. I'm starting to stick in there. I go for a single leg as he throws that knee. Not really to finish the single leg, just to make sure I end up in a good clinch position, like here. I've got my head under his. I get this left collar tie, rip a little shot to the body. He hits a good uppercut and I hit a good elbow. I step back, but I still want to control the center. I check, nearly takes me off my feet. He's kicking hard, even through the check. But I still want to try and control the center. He pushes me back a bit. I'm circling, and even though I take that left hook, I push forward to control the center. I slip and I land a right hand. Left hook, right straight, left uppercut. That left uppercut is a good shout when you've got someone with a good high guard dipping off to their right. Okay, he goes flying knee, and that was really close. I remember thinking I could have been knocked out there. But I just pressure to him, keep him to the fence, land the elbow and the knee. And again, I clip with an elbow. I get <clears throat> clipped with so many elbows in this fight. Still, I want to hold the center. He's backing me off just a bit. I hit a left hook, just like a slap hook. Playing with my lead hand. We're in this hand fight. There's a lot of hand fighting in this fight. And big push kick to the face. Standing still in front of me. That's something about the push kick to the face is that you can't do it to your training partner. So when you're in a fight and you feel like you can do it, I'm just like, okay, I'll throw this front kick to the face. Let me do it. End up in a double collar tie, but I don't use it too well. I just kind of land a little scuff in left hand. Go body hook. And here I get really wild. A good counter puncher would have just hit me with a left hook down the middle. I nearly get kicked in the back of the head. But uh, I get away with it, luckily. He backs me off with a good right hand. I kind of parry it. And I'm looking just to keep pressure. Here I'm in zombie mode. We're seven and a half minutes through, halfway through the fight. I pierce the jab through. Get that left uppercut through. If someone's got a, got a tight, solid guard, don't just hit the guard. Hit those uppercuts. Hit those body shots. So we're standing right in front of each other. We're playing patty cake a lot of the time, and I go push kick to the face. Like I said, when you're in a fight, you can just throw that. Obviously, you don't want to just throw that and get countered, but compared to sparring, you can't do that to your sparring partner. You'll get a bad reputation in the gym. No one will spar with you. Here I'm feeling myself. I drop my hands right in front of him, scuff him with a few shots, and just trying to keep him on the back foot, cutting the fence, cutting the cage. He tries to circle off, so I use that right kick to stop him circling. I'm, I'm kind of jumping in too close. Not landing the cleanest shots. He lands a good left hook into a right kick. But I'm just in zombie mode. Whatever he gets, I want to get it back four times over. Just misses with that elbow he does. I'm looking for that same combo again. Left hook, right straight, left uppercut. Kind of going to it a bit too much. Look how my stance is losing. I'm losing my stance. Go to southpaw. Hit a snap kick and try and use that same technique from the first round. Faint the snap kick and step hard on a jab. Overhand again. More to cut the cage. I look for it two times in a row. Kind of going to the well with it. And a lot of right body kicks in this fight. I'm a big Sing Dam fan. If you haven't watched any Sing Dam, Sing Dam has won multiple Lumpini champions just with a right body kick. It's insane. No other techniques. When I start to push him to the fence, it's a better time to unload. Except for there where he elbows me with his left elbow. I look for that right snap kick. I look for some overhands over it. And he's pushing me back again. Again, reaching out. We play patty cake a lot. He kind of clips me there and I get a bit overconfident. I'm pushing forward. I'm quick just on reactions with that underhook. Again, a lot of the times this happens in this fight. He goes for that right knee and I catch a single leg just to control the clinch position. I'm rushing forward too much while I'm getting clipped here. But I land another jab. Sometimes you jab to cover distance. Sometimes you're just in range and you stick it in the face. I go left uppercut, left hook there. Classic combination. Sometimes just put my cap on. What I mean by that is just holding your high guard up by your eyebrows, closing your fists like you've got a cap. I rush him to the fence, and again a knee. A lot. Of, 
I love knees. And a lot of MMA guys don't do them that well.